you know, much closer to my goal. My 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 safe area is June. The minimum is kind of March. You know, to have my living expenses till March. Then I can usually sort of nickel and dime it till June. But if I have my living expenses paid till June, usually by that time I get an income overlap where by the time I run out of my savings, I'm uh, starting to save again. You, you know what I mean? And that's the goal is not to run out of the savings, right? That's why you want to be like two years ahead of on, on your living expenses as much as possible. I mean, if you're in your 20s, take this advice, not with a grain of salt, but take it to heart. Uh, if you're in your 20s and you're kind of like you're eating ramen noodle packs and you're poor and everything like that and you're shared accommodations, I, I, I know, I've done it. I, I've done the shared accommodations most of my life because it's just, that's how I, that's the only way I can afford things, right? Is live like a rat, live cheap, right? So rather than wasting $1,800 on a, on a dwelling, uh, I'll, I'll split and okay, yeah, you get a little bit less privacy and stuff like that. Sure, I get that it sucks a bit, but on the other hand, having money at the end of the month is kind of nice, you know? Uh, what I would do is, even if you have to put as little as $10 away a month, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, and you just put it away and don't look at it. If you can do 20, do 20. If you can do 100, do 100. And then over time, after a couple of years, you've got, like, you know, maybe... Uh, you know, a couple of months of expenses ahead. And then if the more you can do, like you just put the money aside and you forget about it, right? Uh, where most people, they get money, they spend it right away. I, I don't do that. Like uh, when I make a purchase, I've thought about it and thought about it and thought like some purchases I think about for like two or three years before I even pull the trigger on it. You know what I mean? Because I know how tight money is, right? Uh, the value of our currency is going down. The value of our labor is going down. Uh, you, you know what I mean? So you, you have to be able to square that peg and it's not easy. But if you're young, I'm going to tell you what every senior citizen that I've ever worked for told me since I was a kid. Do it while you're young. Don't, okay, well, when I get to this age, I'm going to do this. Or, no, do it now. Oh, well, I can't do it now. Well, what part of it can you do now? Do that part of it, right? Uh, personally, Start looking at like if you're in the city, buy yourself some hedge trimmers. Uh, go go into the dollar store, like literally go into the dollar store and buy gardening tools, uh, and then start advertising. Uh, you know, like uh, hedge trimming stuff like that. You know, so, uh, say the hedge trimmers uh, five hundred bucks. Okay, that's a lot of money for somebody eating ramen noodle, noodle packs. I get that, but let's say you can find a way to do, do like sixty dollar a month payments or whatever it is on that for a year or something like that. Okay, go, you know, like go to all the uh, areas, put up like any little corner store, just put up uh, a sign saying uh, uh, hedge trimming uh, 35 bucks an hour or something like that. And maybe you get a client every couple of weeks or whatever throughout the summer. And then suddenly uh, the following summer, you'll have three regular clients and they, you know, you, that you do once a month or once a season or whatever, whatever it is. And then before you know it, you have 15 clients, you know, and then you give up your minimum wage job for a $35 an hour job. Uh, and then, okay, well, there's add-ons, okay? You, you've paid for the hedge trimmer. You bought a second one as a backup. You got an electric one. You got two gas ones. Uh, the electric one, you know, where the, it's a bit noise-sensitive areas. Okay, well, do a little bit with the gas one and then, you know, do a little bit with the, uh, you know, the battery one just because it's quieter. Get an electric chainsaw for, you know, small branches, of, you know, if you're not going to be using it all day. Get a gas-powered chainsaw. I get the gas-powered first. Um, you know, guys, like, they're, they're, it's a turnkey business. You know, I wish somebody would have told me that years ago. You know, it's obvious once you're doing it. But it's not obvious. It's like, oh, you know, you're sitting there. Oh, how do I make money as a business? Blah, blah, blah. And how, you know, how do I invest in money? Is it Bitcoin going to make me rich? Most people I know that have Bitcoin, they're not rich. Bitcoin was supposed to make everybody rich. How come it's not making everybody rich? You, you know what I mean? Like, the, you know what I mean? Yes, there's people that made ridiculous money on it, but it, it, it's a gambling. You know, all this investment stuff where, you know, uh, residual passive income is a thing but it's not reliable 
uh, you know, there is no rely like, and everybody that has it coming in in, in, in buckets and spades are like, oh no, it's reliable, it's reliable, and then one day it's just cut off and you lose everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's gambling, uh, so don't rely on that. Uh, strive for it, sure, and if you make a go of it, great. You know, like I see a lot of chainsaw guys with YouTube channels. They follow a tree, and I don't normally do that because I'm on clients' uh, time. You know what I mean? But uh, pretty soon I'm gonna go do a bunch of chain. Well, when I have the time, um, you know, I got some trees and stuff to cut down on. Uh, you know, at our place too. What I'm doing now, I'm gonna show you how I do it. You know, so maybe I make a little bit of income off of that from, uh, you know, passive income from the YouTube videos from that. But even if I don't, it doesn't matter because you know I've already made <laughs> like. For example, that chainsaw on the back, I got from this client here after her husband passed, uh, and that chainsaw I got for free, okay? It needs a chain desperately now, but the amount of money I've made with that chainsaw, and then the mini beast, I paid 200 bucks for him. The amount of money, I made that like pretty much uh, almost two years income with that darn saw, a $200 saw. So even though that saw's uh, got issues and I can't use it, rely on it anymore, uh, it doesn't matter. It was 200 bucks and it made me thousands. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, like what paid for my drum kit, my chainsaws, you know, and other, you know, the regular labor and stuff like that too. What paid for my, uh, you know, you know, you know what I mean? Like, you know, what, what, what got me ahead on my living expenses, my chainsaws, you know what I mean? My whipper snipper, like my $220 whipper snipper. Uh, my $60 whipper snipper. Okay, yeah, it needs meat. It's down for maintenance right now. But uh, those two whipper snippers, you know, again, you know, just buy yourself a $200 whipper snipper and advertise whipper snipper, uh, whipper snippering only. I mean, you can take it on a city, maybe you can't take the gas and stuff on a city bus, but uh, get the clients to get their own gas cans, you know. You never eat, like, these are things you can do. Like you could literally walk uh, a whipper snipper. You could take a whipper snipper on a city bus. Just kind of clean it off a bit before you get on there. You know, maybe wrap it in a bag or something so the, the driver doesn't say anything to you. But you can literally do that. You know, same with the head trimmer. And that whipper snipper will get you your car. That whipper snipper will get you. I mean, if you whipper snip all day for twenty five bucks an hour, okay, uh, and you did an average of six hours a day to eight hours a day, there's two hundred dollars a day. From a whipper snipper, one day, one a little over a day, you pay for a whipper snipper. Uh, you know, if you can keep enough clientele and just whipper snipping, um, like a lot of people have their lawnmower, but most people don't have the whipper snipper. Uh, okay, well, it's an area where you know, okay, you got to a um, lot of sensitive clients, but it's all like uh, small yard stuff. Okay, well, get electric whipper snipper, you know, and then buy three batteries for it so you can get the whole day out of it. You know, you can do that too. Like I'm telling you guys, like uh, if I was a uh, 51 year old me were to talk to uh, 18 year old me again, first I'd slap myself in the back of the head just for the, the stupidity of stuff I would be doing later on, uh, knowing what I know now. I'd go, yeah, you stupid idiot. <laughs> Smart up, you know. Uh, but I'd give myself that advice, you know. I mean, like if you do exactly what I just told you to do and you're like 20 years old, um, it'll take you probably a couple of years to build up the clientele and everything like that. But I've probably just built your, help you build an empire. You don't have to go to college. You just got to come up with the money for the tool. That's it. Uh, whipper snipper over the chainsaw. I'd go with the chainsaw first, uh, or the hedge trimmer, learn how to do it. You know, um, yeah, you work for yourself right away. You know, and I'm telling you guys, like, um, there's money there. There's tons of money in that stuff. Uh, it's hard work, but there's tons of money. Now, tree falling, if you get into that, go take courses on that stuff for sure. Because, like, uh, hedge trimmers are dangerous enough, but chainsaws are about the most dangerous thing you're going to ever use. So, um, I'd really... Um, recommend if you if you didn't grow up around the stuff to uh go and take uh yes you can do a lot of youtube videos and stuff like that but if you've never experienced cutting down tree like large tree like the trees that are in front of you these are all easy trees to cut down when you get something that's uh double the size of the steering wheel 
and it's all twisted like the Manitoba maples. Those things, they, they those things are one of the trickiest trees to cut down because they're twisting and mangling. You're like, okay, it's gonna fall that way, but it doesn't. It's gonna pirouette on you and kill you. Um, like when I'm cutting them with Paul, like I, I don't, I don't want Paul cutting uh, those Manitoba maples by himself. Uh, I'm a little bit better at reading the trees than he is. And I'm like, no, it's going to do this. Watch, <laughs> you know, when I cut it, you just watch what it does. And every time it does, the tree does exactly what it said it's going to do. And there's still unexpected stuff that I'm still learning. You know what I mean? Like uh, plunge cutting with the big saw is kind of fun. 